offering the reed strength that is appropriate to your mouthpiece, um, you should really know that there's no real heroics in playing a four and a half. It's not a testament to how strong you are or how much you practice, but more likely to the facing on your mouthpiece. So I have colleagues that I respect very much that are able to play on threes and three and a halves in a, in a major symphony orchestra and others that play on a four and a half and the end product is pretty much the same. They sound beautiful but what we need to realize is that the reed should be able to vibrate fairly freely with obviously a little bit of structure within your embouchure but, um, but it shouldn't come out fuzzy with no clarity to the sound because maybe you used another um, brand of reed in a size four and a quarter and you're having to maybe play a four in the Rico. It doesn't really matter. Every company is a little bit different. I think um, you have to find the right reed for you that seems to have a beautiful sound with as little effort as you need so that you can make artistic choices without having to just try to get the sound to, to come out. So um, I encourage you to try two or three sizes before you start buying a lot of boxes so that you know what works best for you. You know, I play on four and a quarters in the, in the Rico line, but I recently got some four and a halves to see how they would work. And I'm going to show you what it sounds like to play on a reed that's too hard. First of all, I have to work a lot harder. And working isn't a bad thing, but when it gets to the point where you're just trying to make this, the reed vibrate, then you're not able to think about what you want to do with a phrase. So if I... Oh, that's hard. And then if I put a different reed on... that is a four and a quarter, you'll see immediately where there's some clarity. One thing that I've realized through the course of my career is that when a reed is clear, it doesn't necessarily mean it's bright. Um, I, many times I make the analogy to my students that a reed should be like a really good stereo system. And the reed should have a nice complement of treble and bass and mid-range. But if you have a reed that doesn't allow for any of the cymbals in the drums, but only the bass drum, then it's not going to be very interesting, you know, and you're not going to be able to change colors within your sound. I'm just really struggling just to get the just to get the sound out. But if I go back to that other reed, which by the way I just wet a few minutes ago, so this is the same reed that we just started. You can do so much more and change colors when you get into the right size. How do you get into the right size? I guess you're just going to have to try a, a few different reads and, and it's always nice to have a good set of ears, uh, somebody you respect to, to listen, your teacher, or um, and, and make sure that what you're feeling that might feel like something that's bright, it probably just translates into something more interesting in the concert hall from afar. and. Um, so it's, it's worth spending a little bit of time before you buy lots of boxes of reeds that are too hard and feel that you know, you've, not, you've failed in not being able to make the reeds vibrate.